So welcome to part three. Where we left off last time, I, I asked you guys an interesting maths question. That why at particular angles are we getting these straight lines that seem to form? All right? It seems to happen at 45, at 30. And then what's really weird, at then like 180, we almost seem to get, we get two lines. I wonder if I double that, right? Let's, let's look at this pattern. I go 90, I get four. Okay, I double it, I get two. So now if I double it again, do you think, do you think I'm going to get one? Let's find out. So I'm going to double it again. And yeah, we get one. Okay, so let's, let's discuss why this is happening. I'm going to bring up an iPad here to quickly draw on the screen. So we have our axes over here, right? Um, and we are drawing a point over there. And then we're, we're saying rotate by a certain angle and then um, go around, kind of like that, right? This is if we're not increasing our radius. If we're increasing our radius, then we're starting from the beginning over here, and then we say go out a little bit and increase the angle. Then go out a little bit and increase the angle, go out a little bit, increase the angle, and keep kind of going, and we get the spiral shape. Now, what we're doing when we hit particular points um, around, around this, so let's, let's take 90 for example. If I every time increase my angle by 90 degrees, I'm just going to hit this, I'm, I'm, I'm butchering this axis over here. There we go, finally. Okay. If I start here, and let's say I end up here, my point is here, and now I rotate by 90 degrees, I end up here. Well, in the case of us, and or where the way P5 is, rotating by 90 degrees ends you here. You rotate another 90 degrees, you end up here. 90, end up here. And do you notice how you're going to repeat this pattern? So similarly, if you do 100, if I start over here, 180 rather, and I rotate by 180 degrees, which is that, I end up here. And then I rotate again by 180 degrees, I'll end up here. So that would explain what's happening there. And then similarly, let's take like 45, for example. So 45 is the midpoint of 90. So you would start 45, go 45 rotate 45, rotate another 45, rotate another 45, rotate another 45, rotate another 45. And that's why we're getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight arms that come there. So the number of arms that you're seeing that are coming out like this when it's a straight line is going to be the total number 360 degrees um, over your angle, which is 45. Right, and 360 divided by 45, eight. So if we did two, for example, if our angle was two, we should get 180 arms. Let's see, let's see if we, we probably won't be able to tell it, but let's assume we increasing our angle every time by two. So at a certain point, you're just zoomed out enough that that the arms so if we zoomed out a lot more we might see 180 arms um but that's the general kind of rule um around around the stuff is that the number of arms is going to be equal to 360 over the angle that you're rotating the second that this becomes irrational in the sense of like if i if if something doesn't nicely divide by 360 so let's take let's take 45 for example. So if I have 45, um, we get these eight arms. That's equal to eight. But now if I do 360 over 45.1, what's that? 360 over 45.1, I get 7.98. So then the image becomes very different. So let's see what 45 looks like. All right. And then you do 45.1. Do you notice the slight curve? It's just slightly curving. Um, and if you keep increasing this, eventually you get to a point where it's just like, it's, it just looks quite, quite funky. Um, let's maybe, I don't know, 47.8. Maybe they'll look funky. 
yeah, there we go. And now kind of the arms are a little bit difficult to, to tell. This one is, is you're seeing it normally. But that explains why we were seeing the pattern earlier. So I want to end on that one. And then the next part we're going to be looking at is how to speed up the animation. So the next part I want to focus on is how to speed up the animation. Because currently, if the radius, our change in radius over here is somewhat big, right? If I make it like two or whatever, we get a nice pattern that moves at a good amount of time, right? Like we, we fulfill the screen um, before we turn the age of 70. However, if I put this at 0 0.01, right, my change in radius, you'll notice how slowly this is kind of filling up. And here we're going to have to wait until the age of 70 before we're going to see this fill up the screen. So the question is, how do we speed it up? And in order to do so, we have to do something called buffering. Uh, and we need to understand a little bit more about how the draw function works. So there's a command called frame rate that we can put inside of setup, right? So remember, setup is where you set up everything, and draw is where the things are then pushed or um, drawn onto the canvas. So now in setup, there's a command called frame rate, and we can put a number in there. And the number we put here is the number of frames per second, which means how many times every second does the draw function run? The default is 60. So that means every second, the draw function runs 60 times. So all of this code over here will run 60 times. If I change this to 1, then every second, all of this code will run once. If I change it to 2, all of this, all of this code every second will run twice. And you can notice this. So if I make, if I put frame rate at one and I make my radius, my change in radius like 20 or whatever, we're going to see a new dot every second. There's one dot, there's another. All right, we, we're going to get something quite slow. If we increase our frame rate, we'll notice how the speed at which these dots appear becomes much quicker. Now there is like a maximum that, that, that it comes. After you increase the frame rate at a certain point, it doesn't keep increasing um, how quickly it's drawn. So like at 900, we're not seeing too much of a difference to a million, right? There's like a theoretical max or maximum that P5 can allow for in regards to, to this. So we know that if we want to speed up the code, we want to make this render faster, we need to change the number of times draw is run. But P5 has a limit on how much we can change our frames per second. I'm not too sure exactly what it is. Maybe you can Google it and you can let me know. Um, but we need another way in order to run all of this code multiple times. And the way we can do that is with for loops. So if I create a for loop that just wraps all of the code, and I say I'm going to run it a certain number of times, let's say I run it 40 times, and I put all of this inside of here, and I hit run, it goes much faster, as you can see, right? The previous one. But now something weird is happening. We're getting all of these other lines appearing at weird points on the screen. Why on earth is that happening? Now, if you remember how translate and rotate works, this would make sense. Because translate and rotate is working every time, not according to the origin, right? In the sense that every time translate width over two, height over two is called, it translate relative to its old position. So at first, right, so before this runs, we know our origin is at position 0, 0. After this runs once, our origin will move to position, let's say, whatever, the half of our width and half of our height. So let's just say it moves to 200, 200. Now, when it goes again, it doesn't, it's not going to translate. So when, when, when this loop finishes and it comes back to here, it's not going to translate according to the origin. It's going to translate according to 200, 200. So its new point is going to be 400, 400. And then after that, it will be 800, 800, or it's going to continuously increase. But what we're wanting is for always to stay at the same point, right? So we can see we're getting all of these lines because it's translating to different points along our um, grid axes. So the way in which we can do that is through something called push and pop. So if I do push and pop, what this is saying is when, before I say push, it saves all of the different um, kind of commands 
from stroke weight to where our translation is to where our, our rotation is. It saves, um, saves the state of our canvas. Now, over here, we change the state of our canvas. We say we translate it, we rotate it, we change the stroke weight. But when we say pop now, it goes back to the old state before push was called. So whatever our state was over here, it will go back to it after pop. And now when it comes back to translate, because it's going to loop, it's not going to keep translating it. Translate is always going to make sure that we're staying at our origin. And now when we do that, if I hit run, we don't get the, the, the same problem that we saw previously. And I love, I love this stuff because you get such cool things when you're playing around these small numbers. It's like at the, what you're seeing here is that all of these points are too close together in order to see um, kind of any difference. And then all of a sudden, the spacing becomes significant enough. And you can increase this. We're going to make this really fast. We can maybe put 40,000. We might eventually get to the point where our computer is too much. See, it's instant. It was like, boom. Um, but that's not as satisfying. Maybe 4,000. Okay, and you can see how much quicker it starts, it starts to go and expand. Okay, so that's how we can speed up our animation. We put everything inside of a for loop, and if we're using things like translate and rotate, um, we need to use push and pop in order to make sure that we're always translating and rotating according to like our initial state as opposed to the new state that it created.